Hello, it's Halloween, the 31st of October, 2014. <laughs> I won't need a mask, will I? Yes, that day when all scaredy people come out and people bang at my door for sweets. They're not having any. I shan't be answering my door tonight. No, thank you. There are no sweets in this house. Thank you very much. No sweets. Are you going out party anywhere tonight? Little Halloween party? Have you got your, your various makeup and cuts and scars all going down your face? Cool, dear. Uh, the scariest film I ever saw was the original Friday the 13th. I think I was about 18, 16 or 18, when I went to see that at the cinema. That would have been back in... Oof, Maybe 1980, 1979, 80, 81, something like that. The very first Friday the 13th, I remember sitting there in the cinema absolutely terrified as these bodies would drop down in front of you. Yes, gang, witches and goblins and ghosts are out tonight. I am so excited. I really am. Anyway, uh, on to uh, my dear friend. Uh, oh, no, before I do that... Uh, I'm glad you enjoyed the video yesterday and we've seen that Auntie Brenda has already obtained a little bit of a fan club. Look at your messages. Wendy says, chicken, glad Brenda thinks it's funny too. Did you puke? I never puke, Wendy. No, so they accidentally gave me chicken in my dinner yesterday and I had to send it back at the restaurant. No, I've, I haven't been sick for years. I mean, really, years and... Blimey, let me think, 20, 30, 40, about... I haven't been sick for 30 odd years. Oh, I can't bear the thought of it, being sick. My niece told me it comes out of her nose as well. <laughs> oh, sorry, you're not having dinner or breakfast at the moment, are you? I do apologise. So, Wendy loves Auntie Brenda. Sean Riches. Hello, Sean. Nice to have you. I haven't heard from you for a while. Says, we must have more appearances of Auntie Brenda. She talks even more than Ronnie. Oh, Auntie Brenda can talk. Auntie Brenda knows how to talk. She does indeed. Eloise says, uh, Auntie Brenda is so precious. She's a wonderful woman. It's my um, my mother's, uh, my late mother's sister. That's who Auntie Brenda is. And she really is quite wonderful. She lost her husband um, about four years ago now. And is actually lives in, in, a, in a lovely little place, but very lonely. Very lonely place. No one sort of really walks past um, your front door. Do you know what I mean? So, I, I mean, I give a, a phone call almost every day of the week, but um, it's not enough, really, and I, I do wonder if there's anything else one can do, you know. Thank you, Eloise. Brandon says, loving Auntie Brenda. Lord Dean David Burr. Oh, yes! We have a Lord watching this programme, dear. You didn't know that? Oh, oh, yeah, they all watch it. You know, celebrities. I expect there's a few members of the royal family like to, you know, to peep in now and again to our little show. Hello, if you are there. Hello. I know, I understand. It's not royal protocol to sort of send me an email or anything like that. You just sit there quietly watching. So hello, whichever ones you are, you know, your majesty, Charles, William, Kate, Sarah, whoever. Oh, she's not royal anymore. Sorry, stripped from that. I did forget. <laughs> Welcome to the royal family. Uh, Doug says, very nice, Chris. Doug likes her. Oh, and Stacy says, oh, Auntie Brenda. Auntie Brenda definitely needs a fan club. I think we need to set up a Facebook page. Unfortunately, she's not on the internet, though. No technology for Auntie Brenda. So thank you for your wonderful messages um, from Auntie Brenda. Now... You remember I mentioned uh, about the Daily Express weather forecasts. You know, the big front page weather forecasts. And they are written by someone who used to come. He, he was, a, I think, about 18 or 19 years old. And he used to come dancing in one of the places uh, that I DJ'd at. And that was 20 years ago. He is the guy who writes the reports. And I only found this out last week. Anyway, I've been having a little look at his website. And when he was 20, he was a little bit... Um, uh, shy, shall we say shy? He was very, very shy when he was 20, but he's done so well. Let me read a little bit from his website. Um, he says, the idea of setting up a news service came to me while sitting at my desk one day in the newsroom of a national newspaper, sorting through reams of press releases, press agency copy and freelance contributions. 
And he says, how about a service which produces first class copy, complete, accurate, polished and well written enough to go straight on the page. Now, accurate. I hope you're not talking about your weather forecasts, Nathan. I'll come on to that in a minute. I've been in the newspaper business for 10 years, five working at local publications in Kent and London, and five at the Nationals. I kick-started my career in national media, shifting in newsrooms and submitting stories to publications, including The Sun, Daily Mail, Daily Star, and Sunday People. I was offered full-time casual work with the Daily Express shortly after starting as a shifter, and two years was offered a staff role as consumer affairs editor. Now, it's funny, Nathan, uh, you might actually watch this little video as, as as you're in this one. But my dad used to work at the Express. Did you know that? You didn't, did you? And he came from the Daily Express from the Evening Standard. That would be, you know, some years ago. Uh, I mean, he's been dead since 1996. So, yeah, quite quite a while ago. Um, I've covered stories across the board from high profile court cases and government cabinet meetings to celebrity and politician interviews, consumer issues, health features, royal weddings and general news. I've also written a bit about the weather. A bit! A bit! Your weather stories make the front page, dear! I've never been on the front page of anything! Nothing! No, never! I've never been on a... Can I get on a front page of something, please? Somewhere, please, somewhere. Somewhere, somehow. Well, and you're a big Madonna fan, aren't you? I remember you coming up and asking for your Madonna records. He says, I've also written a bit about the weather. Actually, I've racked up around 200, 200 front pages on the weather while being at the Daily Express. That is something. That is something to be proud of, whether it's right or wrong. <laughs> he says, I've become passionate about storms and blizzards, Spanish plumes, low pressure, high pressure, ISO bars, weather bombs, Azores highs, every, anything and anything meteorological. Now, I took a little bit of an interest in the weather when I was a teenager. Um, I, I had a little jar that I used to put outside to try and collect rainwater, and I made an anemometer thing that you measure, measure uh, wind speed with out of straws and half a ping pong ball. <laughs> this, this thing used to go round and round. Of course, you couldn't measure anything with it, really, because it wasn't attached to anything. But it kept me amused for a few hours. He says, I lay claim to being the only journalist to crash the Daily Express's website after one of my stories drew more than two million hits in just a couple of hours. And uh, so it goes on. So have a look at his website, boys and girls. This boy has done so well. He's in his very early 40s now, and his website is nathanrao.com. N-A-T-H-A-N-R-A-O.com. nathanrao.com. All right, have a look. He's, he's done so well, and I'm really pleased. But here is his latest weather forecast on Tuesday's front page of the Daily Express. Scientists have reissued stark warnings ahead of what some have claimed is set to be the coldest winter for a century. But you said this last year, dear. You said it last year, and it was the mildest for a century. They said a lengthy spell of extreme and potentially devastating weather is just around the corner, partly thanks to an unusually mild autumn. Well, you, we, we, you haven't told a lie there. This is the mildest October I've ever known. Today, Friday, we are looking at 72 degrees Fahrenheit. That's about 21 centigrade. That is something else for the end of October. It really is. Looking at the airflow in the upper atmosphere to produce an index called the October Pattern Index, OPI. Experts have said it. Where do you get all these things for OPI? Uh, experts have said everything points towards a negative Arctic oscillation. Oh, those words. You must be sitting on top of a dictionary. You, I've got a dictionary here. Look at this. Is yours as big as mine, Nathan? One minute. Pardon? Look at this. Reader's Universal Dictionary from Reader. Look at this. Hundreds and hundreds of words you could use here. Right, let me give you a word. Let me give you a word, Nathan. <laughs> Back again. Back again. Got cut off then. Now where was I? Yes. Let me give a word. See if you can work this into your into your next um, weather story. I'm going to pick a word at random 
from this Oxford Dictionary, and I'm going to be a long word, okay, so here we go, hang on, I can't look, it's so small the writing in here dear, just a minute, let's have a look, let's have a look, let's find a random, a long word to use, an unusual word to use in your next weather report, and I'm going to, I'm going to keep a close eye on the Daily Express front page to see if you can use that word. Um, let me think. Because you like these unusual long words, don't you, Nathan? <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know how you're going to use this. Ready? Counter-revolution. Will you be able to use that word in your next front page daily express weather report somewhere in there you don't have to mention me you know just use that word in there and we will know we will know that you can then use any word at all <laughs> that you seem fit to use in your weather report remember the word we want you to use on the show is counter revolution that's a nice long word See if we can use that in your next weather report. Carrying on with this latest extreme weather report from Tuesday's front page of the Daily Express. Um, the resulting weak jet stream, which usually holds the cold air at bay over the North Pole, will give way to a blast of freezing air, which will sweep across the UK. Experts expect this by the middle of November, uh, with snowstorms and numbing Arctic gales set to wreak havoc at airports and on the country's transport systems. Let me see if I can find a little bit more. We'll just whisk through here. The worst case and more plausible scenario could bring something on a similar par to the winter of 2009-10, the coldest in 31 years, or even an event close to 2010-11, which experienced the coldest December in 100 years. And it goes on. And it goes on. So there is your latest Daily Express weather forecast from Nathan Rayo. Do you believe it? That's the question. Because it was hideously wrong last year. And what happened to the war Miss Summer we were supposed to have for the last 100 years? That didn't happen either. It was all right. We've had a nice summer. It wasn't hot, 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 though. Feeling hot, hot, hot. Da -da. Was, that a, was that a Monday night classic? It wasn't, was it? Anyway, I shall leave you there, Nathan, to watch more Madonna videos and possibly do the dance to the Vogue. Vogue, let your body move to the music. Uh, 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 uh. That's all for today, boys. Now, and girls, don't forget, we do do our live talk show on Saturday. I hope my voice has improved a bit by then. Live talk show on Saturday at 12 o'clock UK time. You can join in by Skype and telephone as well. The phone number, uh, uh, sorry, the address where you'll find that is unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Just click the large union flag at the top there and that'll take you uh, to where you need to be. All right, once again, unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Have a lovely Friday and enjoy your Halloween parties. Ha 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 